Oops. Did I mess it up? Okay, so here's a problem I want to work out two different ways because we did something like this in a quiz and I want to show you that there's two things you could do. Okay, so here's the problem. I have this uh, rectangle wire right here and it has this, this is the length uh, L across and I'm pulling it with a velocity V that way. Um, and th this region, there's a constant magnetic field going into the board uh, value B. And so the, the question is, um, what's the EMF uh, in the circuit? You can have a resistor over there if you want. But let's just let's just calculate the EMF. Okay. So here's the first way we're going to do it. So let's take that same magnetic field, and if I put a, a bar in there of the same length L and I move it with the speed V that way. Okay. So we have this metal bar has uh, charges in it. It has electrons. Uh, it has, let's just say it has three electrons that can move. Uh, so if I take one electron right there, then it's moving that way because it's in the bar. What's going to happen? Well, um, I'm going to have QB is that way, right? Because it's a negative charge. I have B going into the board. So I know there's a magnetic force, F equals QV cross B. So in this case, QV cross B, using my right hand rule, QV is that way, B is that way, so QV cross B is that, F. So this electron is going to experience a force, it's going to get pushed up, and it's going to end up, it can't go, can't keep getting pushed up, it's going to end up there, and that's going to leave excess positive charges down here. So eventually this will reach uh, equilibrium. This will reach equilibrium because now these charges are going to make an electric field going this way. E, let's call it, let's just call it E. Okay. So when will it reach equilibrium? It will reach equilibrium when new electrons in the middle have a no net force. So that means there's two forces. Here's that one electron. I have uh, FB is that way and Fe is that way. And so at equilibrium those two are going to be equal. The electric force is going to be Qe, the magnitude, the magnitudes of those are equal. And this is Qvb because V and B are perpendicular. I can just write the magnitude of that force is Qv times B. Well, Qs cancel and I get E. E is Vb. Now what's the potential difference across that? Well now I can just integrate delta V, let's just, I'm just doing the magnitude, is uh, the integral of uh, E dot DL, that E is, if we say E is constant through that region, then we just get this E times L, and E is VB, so delta V equals EMF equals VBL. So now if I go back up here, the same thing, the same potential difference is there. Uh, the only thing is that now <clears throat> these charges can move over here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm, going, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, so they're going to want to keep that same potential difference across there in order to make that uh, this is an equilibrium state. So it doesn't matter whether you're hooked up to the thing or not. What matters is if you hook it up, then I can have a current. And if I don't, then I just have a, a potential difference. But it, this is called, this is motional EMF. Not emotional, okay? Just like Yoda said. Yoda said, did he say always emotion is the future or always in motion is the future? I don't know the answer to that question. Scholars will debate that for a long time. Okay, but there's my EMF, VBL. Okay. Uh, which way would the current be? Well, I'm going to have conventional current going this way, clockwise. Questions? Anyone have a question? See, it's a video. Even if you had a question, I couldn't hear you. That's not how it works. Okay, so now what, when I gave this, it was meant to be an emotional EMF question, but a lot of people try to do it as Faraday's Law. So I'm going to write the simple version of Faraday's Law, even though there's more than one. It just says EMF equals uh, negative 
d magnetic flux dt. Okay. Uh, the negative sign just says which direction is the EMF. I'm really just going to focus on the magnitude. We, we already talked about the direction. It's the same, the same as before. Um, okay, so what's the flux? Let me redraw this little rectangle here. And this is my magnetic field area. Okay, so that's L. And let's call this distance S. So it, and this is whole thing's moving with the speed V that way. So the, uh, there's no flux through this region because there's no magnetic field. So I only have flux in this region. So at this particular instance, flux B is going to be B, the magnetic field times this area. They're, the normal vector to this area is in the same direction as the magnetic field, so it's not, I don't have a, a cosine term in there. So I just get S times L. Now, this flux is going to change because the area is changing. So how fast is the area changing? Well, I can just take the derivative of the flux with respect to time, and I get d dt of b s l. It's possible that all these things could change with time, but uh, we have a constant magnetic field and the, the length is constant, so we can pull those out. So I get b d dt of s. And how fast is this moving? D, ds dt is v. So I get, oh wait, where'd my l go? Uh, so I get L, B, B. Same thing. Um, just as an interesting note, what back up here, what if I had the magnetic field all over? There was no region that didn't have a magnetic field, and I'm pulling it. In that case, the flux wouldn't change because the area wouldn't change, and there'd be no EMF. Also, if I do the motional EMF kind, I would get a change of potential across this. I would get the same thing over here. And those two together would be like batteries hooked up the same, uh, the same way and there's going to have no current. Okay. So there's two different ways of doing the exact same problem and they agree. That's the point.